Hello, hello. Happy Monday. How you doing? Welcome to this week's vlog. I don't think I really have any set plans this week that I can think of aside from work. I'm working six days this week, so I'm not going to be doing much outside of that. But I am in like a huge reading mood. It's always the last week of the month and the first week of the new month that I'm like in like a, like a mega reading mode because I want to try and get my stats as high as I can before the month ends. <laughs> so right now I'm reading A Lady for a Duke at long last. I'm roughly halfway through. I'm on page 219 right now and I'm loving this one. It's so so good so far. I'm having a, a great time with it. So I'll be reading that one this week and then I have been trying to find an audiobook to pick up for the last couple of days but I'm I don't know if I'm like starting to slump or if I'm just not really feeling things that I'm picking up right now because I'm trying really hard to go for my backlist things and like things that have been on my TBR the longest on Goodreads but because I'm doing that I'm ending up picking up a lot of books that like I don't really have interest in anymore. So I've DNF'd like I think four things so far in the last couple days. I DNF'd Reverie by Ryan LaSala. This morning I very briefly picked up uh, Victories Greater Than Death by somebody whose name I can't think of. Did not like that one at all. <laughs> like I think I got through like maybe 10 minutes of the audiobook and I was like fuck no. This is not the book for me. I think it was just the narrator of the audiobook was really annoying and I'm like I'm not dealing with your voice for like six hours. <laughs> so but yeah, I did up that one. There was another one that I can't think of. I've already forgotten, to be honest. Didn't get far into that one either, whatever it was. And something else. I don't know. Either way. It's great because like the things that have been on my TBR for the longest are coming off of my TBR. So that's really nice. But I'm also DNFing like crazy right now. So it is what it is. But yeah, so for tonight, I'm home early today from work. So I have plans. My battery is charging for my camera. I do want to film at least one video tonight, preferably two if I can. I'm finally going to get my first half of the year book haul done. I've tried to film that video five times, no four times now. Today will be the fifth time that I've tried to film that and I swear to whatever god will hear me that I will succeed this time. It's gonna happen and if it doesn't I'm gonna be pissed off. <laughs> so yeah, I, I want to film that one and then I do also want to film my TBR for the Aurelia Magical Readathon next month. And then I do also want to do a five star prediction video as well because one of the prompts that, that I have to read for Aurelia is a five star prediction so I'm like why not make it a whole video. So I want to do that today. I want to read some more of this. I want to play some Zelda. I'm gonna have a very busy night. <laughs> so, um, so yeah I'm gonna get to doing those things and then I also have to edit last week's vlog as well. So lots of things to get done today and I want to do like I mean, I don't w not want to do things. I just also want to sit here and play Zelda for like six hours, but I can't do that. I have things to do because I also have to do my laundry and clean the bathroom today. So mm. <laughs> anyways, I'm going to go and do those things and I will catch you guys later on. fresh haircut looking cute man if any like actual hair people ever saw how I cut my hair they would be appalled and horrified because <laughs> it's not so much a haircut as it is just taking a pair of kitchen scissors and just hacking away at it until I'm satisfied <laughs> but somehow it looks okay you know like it looks decent I think at least there's nothing like overly wrong with it it's relatively even and that's all I need plus it's curly so if it is a bad haircut you can't really tell because the curls hide it it's perfect <laughs> anyways I'm like super sweaty and gross right now I just got home it's that time of year when you first leave your house it's chilly and kind of rainy and then on your way back it's hot and muggy and humid so that's where we're at I was wearing a jacket and on the way there I was cold and now I'm gross so I love that it is what it is but I just went and spent way too much money at winners because the halloween stuff is out i went in for one thing all i wanted was some pumpkin spice coffee syrup so i could make my own ps health at home my area in the city where i live there's literally no other coffee shops within walking distance of me there's a tim hortons and there's a starbucks and that's it and tan pumpkin spice is awful and i don't want to support starbucks so i figured i would get 
pumpkin flavored stuff and be able to make my own coffee at home plus that way I can make it half decaf as well um, but anyways I went in for that one thing and I walked out with way too much stuff so <laughs> let me show you what I got I was responsible to a degree and I put some things back I had way more stuff in my cart that I put back and I'm sad about it I already spent too much money so I put things I put a couple things back we'll start let's kind of grab the first thing I see I got a really really pretty yellow bath towel um, all of my towels are like old and gross, so I wanted to get, to get a new one. And yeah, it's very soft and it's actually big enough for my body, which is really nice. Because that's the thing about not being a thin person is that bath towels often don't fit you. And it's really annoying to have to walk from the bathroom to my bedroom with basically my entire lower half hanging out because the bath towel does not go around me properly. So this one does and it's pretty and soft and I like it. So. Um, so that's one thing. And then I got some pumpkin spice coffee. Ooh, caught that. Um, this one I got because like I try and drink decaf most of the time because I was way too addicted to, to coffee for quite a while there for many years. So last year I had no coffee for like six months and it was hell. I had caffeine headaches for weeks it, 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 and it did not go away, but I didn't cave. I had no coffee. And now once in a while I let myself have a caffeinated coffee but most of the time I just stick with the, with that uh, decaf but this I want I, I love pumpkin spice coffees so I figured I could mix some of this with some decaf coffee and still be able to have my pumpkin coffee so I got this and then I also got some pumpkin instant coffee to bring to work with me because I'm really trying hard to stop going to Tim so much I'm trying to be smart see I'm trying to save money by spending money <laughs> Not me justifying all of my purchases today. This next thing had no justification. I just wanted it. <laughs> How stupid is this? I love it. I've been wanting a disco ball for my room forever and I found a freaking pink one. Like how could I not get this? This is so fun and so stupid and I'm gonna try and hang it in the middle of my little flower chandelier right there where my light is. See if I can make that work. Um, yeah, I couldn't not get this. Uh, there was no price tag on it, and I was like, if it's less than $15, I'll get it. And it was $13, so I got it. <laughs> it's so dumb, and I love it. <laughs> oh, and there's the pumpkin spice syrup that I got. It's the zero calorie, zero sugar, zero carb one. I really need to not consume so much sugar. I'm really bad for that, especially with, like, not having coffee as much in the last year and a bit. My sugar cravings have gone through the roof, so I, I need to not add more sugar, <laughs> so sugar-free one. And this one is not for me. I got my roommate uh, an early Christmas gift that I'm just going to hang on to until the season. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, so it's um, rose quartz and obsidian candle and there's some stones in there as well too. And there's a cute little um, spell on the back as well too. So I thought that she would like that. So I'm going to hang on to that until Christmas and give that to her for then. It smells really nice as well. Uh, and I was proud of myself. I was very tempted. I think I had at one point four candles in my in my cart and I put them back. So though that I might go back for though, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> or wait until Christmas and go and get the clearance ones. And then I got this adorable frame. I really hope that this is the right size for a Polaroid. It looks like it is, but I didn't have a way to find out. So hopefully that'll be good for Polaroids so cute i love the color of it and like how funky it is with the bubbles and yeah i realized that i have like literally zero pictures of like friends and my chosen family up it anywhere in my house so i wanted to make a little collage of polaroids that i have with my friends from like years ago and yeah it's a cute green color so couldn't say no last thing i got a new comforter so yeah it's a nice like light green color so when my old roommate moved out and i took this room uh, and i was decorating it my intention was to have green as the main color like this nice light green like this and like this that was meant to be the main color and my old blanket was that color and then I had all my accents in pink so I had like pink pillowcases and pink flowers and like that kind of thing but green was meant to be the main color green is my favorite color I had that I had that I had a green blanket and then my cat Bella before she passed I came upstairs to go to bed one night and she I don't know how that tiny body had that much liquid in her but she threw up all over my blanket and like i'm not i'm not even kidding it was like at least three times like the puddle was like at least three times the size of her body it was insane and like yes i washed it and like yes it was technically clean but i just i couldn't use the blanket again i just knew how much puke had been on it i couldn't 
deal with it. So I threw it out and I got a new one. I ended up with um, this like fuzzy, hang on, with this like fuzzy pink one that I have currently, which I like it. It's really fun, but like I knew when I got it that it was gonna be a pain in the ass to clean. And it is indeed a pain in the ass to clean. Can you stay? Come on, thank you. Yeah, like it's awful to wash. It's horrible to dry. I have to air dry. Otherwise it's just like, I put it in the dryer one time and now there's like, there's just like huge patch of like burnt fuzz and it's so bad and it collects dust and like anything that was on my feet when I get in bed, like it's just full of dirt all the time and it feels so gross. So like, I'm gonna not keep the fuzzy blanket as much as it made me happy when I first got it. It no longer makes me happy. And yeah, now I have a green blanket and I can go back to having my room being mostly green. I love pink, but there is way too much pink in here right now. <laughs> like everything is pink, which is really funny. Cause like I like, I mostly dress in black and like I wear like chains and I have like the shaved head and that kind of thing and like piercings so I like dress more punk and I and I listen to like mostly metal and rock and then you come in my room and you just see pink flowers everywhere <laughs> it's so funny so instead of pink flowers we're gonna have pastels <laughs> and that'll much better match my vibe um <laughs> no I'm a firm believer that there is no such thing as having just one aesthetic nobody should have to stick with just one style that suits them I love pink I love flowers I love pastels and I also love change and spikes and metal and punk music like I can like both things and that's fine <laughs> anyways enough of the shopping haul reading stuff so I'm actually almost done a lady for a duke now so oh also by the way it is wednesday i didn't say that earlier so yeah i'm on page 325 of a lady for a duke probably going to try and finish this tonight if i can i'm loving this so much it's so good <laughs> yeah i don't want to say too much about it because like it's not a lot of actual plot happening so i feel like saying anything about it would just kind of spoil what's actually happening in it but aside from the fact that i'm loving this i'm going to not say any more about it for now at least yeah this is really really good and then okay so i was editing last week's vlog and <laughs> I said last week that like I was going to talk about the books that I DNF'd and then I didn't do that and then I came back a couple days later and I was like I feel like I was forgetting something and yeah it was the books that I DNF'd I was gonna talk about those so now I'm actually going to talk about those so I DNF'd Late Bloomer no idea who the author is <laughs> this one I'm sad about so I heard about it a while ago and then I was unsure about it but then I heard somebody that I watched on YouTube talking about it recently so I figured I would give it a try I had it on hold at the library for the audiobook and I started it and I didn't get too far into it you know, I got like maybe 10% in which is a little early for me to DNF I normally wait until like at least 15 preferably 20 but I really couldn't deal with the main character I've learned recently that I really don't like when main characters in books are people pleasers it just really annoys me when like people are clearly trying to like take advantage of them and they just like like oh like everything is fine surely they mean well and is it because i'm also a people pleaser and when i read those characters i see myself in it and i get mad at myself maybe maybe that's what it is but we don't have to talk about that <laughs> that is a whole other thing and definitely not related <laughs> but either way yeah i just i just really don't like when main characters are 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 me basically <laughs> it just feels like being called out a little bit too hard so i feel like that book is just like kind of a me problem and other people would probably really enjoy it i just i don't like it it makes me feel like i'm in therapy <laughs> but anyway so yeah that one was a dnf and then the one that i was really sad about i dnf'd the honey witch by sydney j fields i think was the author man i'm so sad about this one this has first of all adorable cover super cute uh and like it's a queer cozy fantasy and like that is my jam I love that but like I got through I think I read about 60 pages of it and yeah I was not caring about anything like at all I didn't care about any of the characters I didn't like the characters either I liked the main character but I didn't like any of the side characters so far the grandma was okay but like other than that I didn't like anybody else the, and like the writing was just okay as well too so there was really nothing about it that was like holding my attention at all so sadly a DNF for me, but you know, yeah, maybe I'll try it again at some point when I'm like, maybe I just like wasn't in the mood for cozy fantasy right now, but we'll see. I was looking forward to this book so much and I got through like so little of it, <laughs> but it is what it is. Anyways, I think that is enough rambling for right now that I've been talking for like 20 minutes right now. So uh, I'm going to be quiet and go read my book and deal with my pile of things that I have acquired today.
I'm adopting a cat. <laughs> uh, I'm just so excited. Um, yeah, I'm getting a cat, uh, I think next week. <laughs> I can't wait. I was, I had like full plans of coming on here and like talking about books first and then sharing the news, but uh, like hit record and just immediately <laughs> burst with the news. Yeah, so I was looking on the SPCA's website last week and I saw this big boy. <laughs> His name is Tony, Tony the Tiger, to be precise. And I saw him and I'm like, uh-oh, <laughs> that's my cat. Oh no. And I went and did a little meet and greet with him today. And the second I heard his meow, I was done. Goner. Like, that's my boy. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a big orange cat. Uh, <laughs> he's both tall and chunky. He's a, he's, he's a big boy. <laughs> um, he is about 14 and they found him as a stray, but he's like so loving and affectionate that like they think that he must have been somebody's pet and like they have no idea what happened to him. Maybe he escaped, maybe his owner passed away. Like they have, they have no idea, but they found him as a stray outside. And yeah, he was just like the sweetest little guy or not little guy, he's just the sweetest big guy. Like within 30 seconds of meeting him, he's like giving me headbutts and like rubbing his face all over me and sniffing me and like giving me kisses. Oh my God. And his meow is so weird. He has like the scratchiest, like scrungliest meow. Nobody will ever top Bella's scrungly meow. Bella was the scrungliest of scrungly cats and her meow will go down in history as being the weirdest cat meow that I've ever heard. But Tony is a good match for weird meows. It's so scratchy and cute and just I heard it and it made me think of Bella and I started crying like pretty much immediately. Like <laughs> it was very embarrassing. But yeah I met him and I saw him and I'm like yep that's my cat. So uh, I'm just waiting for one of my roommates to just confirm that she's okay with me getting a cat and bringing a cat into the house and when she does then I'm gonna email the SPCA and uh, go get them next week so <laughs> I'm so excited I'm getting a cat Ugh, I'll show pictures I didn't take any videos while I was there because I was so excited to meet him that I like fully forgot to vlog like period but yeah I'm so excited I can't wait to get a kitty I have missed having a cat so badly like it's been so weird without my Bella like she's she's always with me you know both in terms of she's always here but also she's on my leg as a tattoo so I, I'm always with her and she she's always with me but um I do miss having a cat a lot and I think I'm ready for it I wasn't for a while I needed some time to like grieve but I think I'm ready for it now so I'm gonna cry again oh my god <laughs> The weird thing with testosterone is that I have a really hard time crying now, um, but like when I do, ooh, <laughs> it's like the floodgates open and I'm just like, mm. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so excited. I can't wait to for everyone to meet him and he's going to be, I have a feeling that he's going to be like the star of the show because he's very affectionate and he needs attention like constantly. So I feel like when I'm going to be like doing videos and that kind of thing that he's going to be right up in there and you guys will be very familiar with my Tony. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to share the news. I do also have reading stuff to talk about. So I was editing last week's vlog the other day and I realized that I read a whole last book and like over the course of several days and literally didn't mention it a single time <laughs> last week. So my bad. But last week I read Girls at the Edge of the World, I think it was called, by no idea who the author is. Clearly this was not a very memorable book. I did I did like it. It was good. Um, it's a sapphic YA fantasy about a girl who is a royal silk flyer. Like they do the like acrobats on the silk ties in the air and the end of the world is coming. There's been like prophecies of like a certain number of storms are going to happen and once that happens then the world is going to flood and anyone who's not on this ship is going to die. Um, but there are a very limited number of spaces on the, on the ships, obviously. It was a good book. Like, I liked the premise a lot with, like, the whole Silk Flyer thing that was very unique. And it was also a sapphic romance in there as well, which I enjoyed. And yeah, like, it wasn't a bad book. It was just kind of, like, bland. Um, I didn't really care that much about what was going on. I liked it enough to read the whole thing. I gave it three stars. And, um, yeah. Yeah, it was just good. And then I'm also reading now, I'm reading The Fay Keeper by H.G. E. Edgman, the sequel to The Witch King. Also very fitting. I have my 
uh, my messy bookmark for my book about messy queers. Thought that was very fitting. <laughs> but this one is about a trans boy. He's a witch. Uh, and like in, in this world, witches come from fairies. Like, like, um, like when fairies have a kid, they're usually fairies, but sometimes they're born as witches and they're considered to be like worthless and they're treated horribly and that kind of thing. Um, the main character of this is a witch. At the start of the first book he was engaged to the fairy prince but he ran away and the fairy prince comes to find him to still get married because he has to take the throne and needs to get married to do so I guess. I kind of forget why but either way um, that was book one and then book two picks up where things left off. It's very much about taking down a broken system and trying to rebuild a better society for everyone not just for the fairies and yeah it's really good. I love this. It's hilarious. I forgot how funny the narrative voice is. The main character is very sarcastic and prickly and I love that about him. He's so fucking funny and so incredibly gay. This is like the gayest character I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so fun. So yeah, I'm reading this one, enjoying it so far. I'm on page uh, 112 right now and that's my plan for the rest of the night is to continue on with this one. So I'm reading that and then I'm also reading A Sorceress Comes to Call by T. Kingfisher. My library hold came in for it and I am loving it so far. It's so good. I didn't actually read the synopsis but from what I've gathered so far from the bit that I've read it's about a 14 year old girl whose mother is a sorceress and she's like pure fucking evil and she's trying the mother is trying to seduce a duke i think trying to seduce somebody um and the and the main character is just kind of a pawn basically i think i read that it's a retelling of the goose girl i think and like a dark fairy tale version of it it's it's really good so far it's it's the kingfisher so of course it's good but yeah reading that one i'm I actually don't know how far I am into it. I'm doing the audiobook, ebook, tandem read right now. And I forgot to check how far along I am, but far enough to know that I like it a lot so far. But yeah, so that is the reading updates. Uh, I'm trying to finish those two books before September 1st because it's the start of Magical Readathon and I do want to, I have a lot of books to read for September. So I do want to try and get everything read that I need to read for the Magical Readathon. So I'm hoping that I can go into September having no books on the go currently. <laughs> so I have the rest of tonight and all of tomorrow to finish the two that I'm reading, which is tricky because I am working the whole day tomorrow. So, you know, I will do my best, but yeah. Anyways, I am going to go and talk into a book. I think I'm going to grab a bowl of ice cream. I have peach ice cream in the freezer. It's fucking delicious. Yeah, I think I want some of that. It's also, if you can hear it, it's raining right now and kind of thundery. I've got my like mood lighting on. I've got my favorite candle going back there. I'm having a good night. So yeah, I will check in with you guys later. And here we are once again, not closing out the vlog on the correct day. What else is new? <laughs> Hi. Uh, yeah, it's Tuesday. My bad. So I think last we spoke, I was in the middle of A Sorceress Comes to Call and The Fae Keeper. I did manage to finish both of those ones before, well, I finished this one on the first, but like close enough. But yeah, The Fae Keeper, I loved this one. I thought this was such a good conclusion to the duology. I feel like there would be room for a third book, so maybe one day we'll get lucky and get a third book. I have no idea if there's plans for that yet. I hope so. But as is, this is a good conclusion to it. I'm satisfied with the ending. I loved how things went. Can't say much about it because it is a sequel. But, um, but yeah, this was great. I gave it four stars. Had a great time reading it. I can't get over how funny Wyatt is. Like, he's so sarcastic. I was laughing throughout this entire book. It was great. So, yeah, good time there. Four stars. Very much recommend this little duology. And then for A Sorceress Comes to Call, I also gave that one a four star. Man, I love T.K. Fisher. Like, she just never disappoints. But yeah, that one was excellent. It was like a little bit predictable, but it was also like, it's a it's a fairy tale. And like, I, I, I like when fairy tales are kind of predictable because it feels more like comforting, like coming back to a story that I'm already familiar with. So yeah, it was phenomenal. And I had a great time with that one as well. But yeah, that'll be the end of this vlog at least. And now we're into September and the Magical Readathon. So this whole month of vlog is all going to be Magical Readathon stuff, which I'm very excited about. So look forward to all of that coming out soon. Thanks for watching and I will catch you guys later on. Bye.